Hi, in this episode I'll be talking to my friend Fernando Chris, a shark diver originally from Lisbon in Portugal but has spent much of the last decade in the Canary Islands. Over a brew we'll chat about his love of painting and fine art, motorbikes and jazz music, then on to his dedication to the education and conservation of sharks. Do you fancy a brew? Fernando and I first met four years ago out in Fort Aventura on a military scuba diving expedition where we worked with him to document the breeding season of the angel shark, better known as the Squatina Squatina. Since then, I have followed his work closely from Facebook with envy, as he continues to promote a very important message about how we shouldn't be afraid of the sharks in the water, but should be afraid of the water without sharks. This was a great interview, so grab yourself a brew, sit back and enjoy. I, I'm currently in Lisbon, in oh, yeah. Lisbon, Portugal. Right, so you've gone home. Yeah, I run away. <laughs> In a way, yeah. Yeah, I run away before before they close the borders. Right. Uh, it's not running away, but I plan to to change to Portugal, and I I went. I, I came in the beginning of the year. Yeah. And then I went back to Canary Islands to pick up my stuffs. But when I when I arrived there, I found um, that. The, the 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 coronavirus was already uh, there, so I made a, a U-turn. And <laughs> I left my motorbike there. I left a lot of things there, but I prefer to come. And then a weeks later, some weeks later, they closed the borders. Right, Spain is really critical, you know. Yeah, well, I don't know if you remember how we met uh, about four years ago when. The army came out to Fortaventura yeah, and sure. we did the training. So is that a permanent thing? Are you moving back to Portugal permanently? Those are my plans, yes. All right. We never know. Uh, maybe in one year or two I have new plans, but right now I will stay here for a while. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm. Interesting I'm, I'm times. Waiting. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for the, the borders to open, to, to pick up a flight to Tenerife, where I have my bike, to pick yeah. up my bike at least. And right. then I have some more stuff in uh, another island, in La Gomera. And yeah. uh, maybe I'll, I'll fly to La Gomera just to pick a <laughs> bag with my essential things. Yeah. That I, want, I, I do not want to lose them. So, right. But they are safe. That's mm. okay. I get you. And so, now you are you are more involved in in diving and in uh, teaching. Yeah. So when we first met four years ago, so two thousand and sixteen, I think that was. Yeah. That that was pretty much my first year of diving. So only the summer before. Well, no, that that particular year it was the October in two thousand and sixteen, yeah. if I'm right. So I I'd only so. just learned to dive in the August. So it was uh-huh. brand new to me. And and I just love to be involved with things that I like to do. So obviously my passion for diving has grown and grown. Um, and through Steve, I became an instructor and various other things like a supervisor through the army. Yeah, 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 yeah which right. which then grew into me starting a little YouTube channel, doing little tutorials for newer divers, such as where I was at when I met you. Yeah, and then. Quite often, over the over the last few weeks while we've been on lockdown, I've been listening to different podcasts. So there's one bloke who does it, and he talks very much about the mental and physical resilience needed for adventurous sports, whether that be um, rowing across the Atlantic or climbing Mount Everest. Mm-hmm. And it, I found it quite interesting to just listen to two people who I didn't know, but they were yeah. talking about things that I'd gone through Without, I've, I've never climbed Mount Everest and I've never rode across the Atlantic, but the yeah. mental and physical resilience part I understood through different sports that I've done or problems that I've encountered, which led me to want to do something more like what we're talking about now. It's rowing the the Atlantic. Yeah. You know, there's a, a big race, a Talisker, Talisker whiskey race. It's yeah. a kind of, they, they live from La Gomera, where right. I, I used to live these yeah. last uh, couple of years. And uh, I met uh, uh, an English guy, a very, very, same age, more or less, as, my, uh, as mine. And yeah. he, he crossed the Atlantic rowing. 
and uh, he was training uh, himself with the team. He's from the the Tain region. Tain? Right. Yeah, yeah. Newcastle. Yeah, you know? yeah that's like yeah, the northeast. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Uh, and he, they, they were training them uh, themselves. To, they, they were preparing to cross the Arctic in the summer. This right. Summer, uh, uh, <laughs> rowing from the Atlantic to Pacific. Wow. By the north of Canada. Yeah. Yeah, and now they are stopped and they are rowing in their own garage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, yeah. you <laughs> Well, it's interesting you say that because Talisco Whiskey. They sponsor this guy's podcast that I started listening to. Oh, so it yeah. might be they might be the same people. I don't know, um, but it'd be interesting the, to find the, out. The name, the name of my friend is Phil Kite. No, Phil? yeah, Kite. I, d I don't, I don't recognize that name. It's not certainly yeah. not the okay. guy that um, I was talking about. There's a, there's a new petition in UK presented by an organization. I know them also. They are working in uh, Thailand and uh, in. Some some uh, diving centers in that region in Asia, but uh, their name is uh, Shark Guardians. Shark right. Guardians. Yeah. But, and they are promoting now the uh, petition in UK to the uh, British Parliament to propose the stop shark fins importation. You know. Right. Yeah. That's the first step in the UK. It will be. It will be a first step. I hope. I really hope. I can. I at the end. I can. I can pass you the the link. Just yeah. to, to put you in contact, if maybe you can absolutely. Be yeah. Uh, uh, after the Brexit, the Brexit, of course, we 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 lost we the European uh, Union uh, yeah. citizens. We lost uh, a very very strong partners and very good friends. Also, that was already in our uh, uh, small uh, citizens group, and that. They, they, last year, we proposed, including the UK, we proposed to the European Commission this uh, this initiative. Yeah, uh, this is a, a official tool for for the European Union. I'm talking about the European Citizens Initiative called uh, Stop Thing. And uh, yeah. well, of course, we don't expect to. to the stop thinning because stop thinning is already legislated since uh, uh, 2013. Right. But now we want to stop the trade. We want that uh, an extension to the trade uh, 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 to stop the, 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 the legal trade of things in Europe. Importation, uh, uh, trade inside the country, the, the, the European Union, and yeah. exportation. European Union is one of the most important uh, uh, economic uh, units to export things to to Hong Kong, to Asia. No way. Yeah, M mostly you know, unfortunately, mostly Spain. First of all, Spain is the biggest uh, country, and the second country is Portugal. It's incredible, but we have a lot of fishermen here going out. They they even the big boats they they go very very far like uh, into New Zealand waters they fish sharks they fin the sharks they yeah. just bring the the, the fins on, on board yeah. and we, they come to Europe to land the, the fins after wow. that the fins are exported to to Hong Kong that's incredible it is crazy i, I yeah. just don't get it I mean, there's there's much nicer soups available in the market i think <laughs> 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 Definitely. Yeah. So, so let's start from the beginning then. If you could, obviously, I know who you are. I've followed you for since we first met. I'm well aware of who okay. you are. But for our listeners, um, and as best you can, give us a little bit of a, a rundown of who is Fernando Reese. Yeah. Okay. I'm a shark diver. I used to present myself as a shark diver. Uh, what does this mean? Basically, this means that I'm uh, I'm a diver. And uh, when I dive, I try to uh, join a second uh, interest of mine, which is shark conservation. Okay? Yeah. Uh, sharks are uh, very different. There are very different, there many species of sharks. There, actually, there are uh, about 540 different shark species all over the world, scientifically identified. And of course, there are sharks in all uh, all the oceans, all the all saltwater uh, regions in the planet. And uh, we, as uh, when we dive, 
we have all, always the opportunity, if we are lucky, I say, yeah. <laughs> to uh, uh, meet some of these shark species. They are very, very shy. They are completely the opposite of the image that the the, the movies from um, Hollywood and that. Hollywood or Bollywood or whatever they made <laughs> commercial movies, you know, yeah. to, to attract uh, to sell tickets to attract public to their uh, scary movies. But mm. sharks are not like that, not at all. I've been diving with the white sharks in South Africa. I've been diving with sharks uh, in Australia, more or less all around the world. I I, I had had the luck, uh, I may say, I had the, the opportunity of travel quite a lot. And uh, diving with a, a, a very large number of uh, shark species, and all the all the shark species are very very shy, inclusive inclusive the the, the tiger sharks and the, for example the great white sharks. Yeah, they they come always with very with a lot of careful. And they are, if we know a little bit about sharks, if we, we, we if we study them a little bit deeper. Uh, we understand them and we can manage any uh, critical situation. Yeah. In fact, we have developed, I, I, I'm now running uh, also, I have the, the opportunity and the honor and the responsibility of running a, a, an NGO, uh, an, yes, a, a non-governmental uh, organ, organization yeah. uh, for shark uh, conservation based on uh, education of the youngest, education of the general public, education on the role of the importance, uh, on the importance of the role of sharks maintaining the, the marine balance, you know? Right, yeah. So, uh, I'm, I, we met uh, four years ago in Canary Islands and we were uh, focused specifically on the angel sharks, but of course, uh, angel sharks are, are uh, there, there's a family of angel sharks, I think there's about 23 different species all over the world of angel sharks. And we met there for one species only, the Squatina. Squatina, Squatina yeah. Exactly. They are very, very, very beautiful. They are a little bit shy also. They are uh, wonderful. They are masters in camouflage, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they are not quite quite a normal shark. They are bent. Benthic uh, animals. This means they live on the bottom of the, the sea floor, uh, and, and we have the idea of a normal shark is more a pelagic animal, which yeah. means it's a, it's an animal which lives in the water column, not in the bottom. So, okay, there are ma many different shark species, and my my first interest as a as a diver is looking for sharks, of course, and uh, I have always uh, um, one question in my mind, which is, what is that shark doing there at that moment? If I know the answer to this question, I'm safe and there's no problem, N not for me, neither for the shark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> So what what got you into diving specifically just diving what was what was was that your first love was it the nature of it or was it photography or the conservation what what took you into the water I uh, uh, well it, it was also the opportunity I was born in Lisbon in Lisbon in Portugal and uh, really I I went to the seaside uh, quite young a little child with my parents and uh since a young boy, I, I get the attraction of going into that uh, area uh, besides o on the on the right side of the beach or on the left side yeah. uh, of each beach, uh, more rocky during the low tides. You know, there are yeah. small swimming pools. Rock pools, yeah. Are, not swimming pools, sorry. There are there are small tight pools there yeah. where, with, with a lot of life. And uh, that that attracts me a lot. After that, I was a kid. I maybe I had uh, eight, nine years old, and I loved to go there in, uh, during the low tides. And after that, I asked for I asked my parents to to buy me a, a mask for snorkeling. Yeah. <laughs> so I, so I, I had the lucky. I was very lucky, and I, very young. I, I had a, a, a snorkeling mask and a, a snorkel yeah. to breathe. 
uh, and to look uh, below the water. And that changed my life, really. After that, uh, well, I, when I was uh, older, after 22, 23 years old, I, I, I learned to dive. And uh, after that, I, I didn't stop. Until now. <laughs> Lucky guy. I waited to my mid-30s before I could do it. Quite an expensive sport, though, isn't it, to get into? Especially if you're going to try and make a living from it as well, like you seem to. Uh, it's impossible to make a living from diving, in my opinion. You mm. have to, 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 to work. Uh, it happened to me. I, I, I had a lot of difficulties to go diving. It was expensive to go diving. I didn't have all the equipment. I had to rent everything and to pay yeah. the boat and so on mm. in the beginning. So I, 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 I learned very, very early to dive. Uh, but I, later I spent more or less about 10, 15 years without diving because I, I was working. I, had, I have uh, also the, the time to grow a family. I have two 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 kids, two boy. Well, now grown up boy, <laughs> grown yeah. up boy yeah, already. But uh, it was time for working. And fortunately, I I I I had a very very nice, uh, well paid work, and I saved some money to spend my la these last these last years traveling around the world and diving. And of course, the last years of my professional career, I was already uh, on the holidays. I was already traveling a lot for diving. Yeah, yeah that's, that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I only hope I can do something like that at some point because yeah, but don't 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 think you can live from diving. No, not even if not. you you are the best instructor in the world. No, no, you have to spend a lot of money or always. Yeah. To travel to yeah that's difficult really. i think i think with what you said there even if you were an instructor you are instructing you're not going diving are you exactly that's another thing yeah 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 so there's a, there's a big difference isn't there massively yeah, you're not you're not doing it for you you're doing it to pay for your life which yeah yeah you're not actually then having in some respects so I've done a little research on you like i try to oh. do on all of my guests because Obviously, I, I like to ask questions that are quite relevant rather than just pretending I, I, I know this bloke for four years, but I've, I don't know anything about him. So, first of all, I went onto Google and, and, and did a search for your name. Turns out, so for my research, you were born in 1990 and you were a Brazilian weightlifter in the, in the Olympics. That's not true, is it? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not me. <laughs> So it says here, it says the, two, the, the 2012 and 2016 Olympics, you came fifth and twelfth. <laughs> no, I was born in Lisbon, in, Lisbon, in Portugal, in, in the 1958. Wow. I'm now, 60, I'm now 61, I will be 62 already in October. <laughs> but he's got exactly the same name, but he's Brazilian. <laughs> so I thought that might make you laugh. <laughs> um, so it looks like you're into your music well you're you're quite a creative guy aren't you you're into your art you, you're painting and you yeah, seem to I, like your yeah. music as well what's what's your favorite sort of genre of music classical jazz I, i'm 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 very keen of jazz yeah yes. yes jazz some classic but a lot of jazz yes do you, do you play any instrument no 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 uh, <laughs> I, I have I have no not no 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 uh, no skills no competencies <laughs> either no I don't I don't dare to play anything no I tried I, I, about five years ago I tried to pick up the drums and I I can get my hands doing something but as soon as <laughs> my feet start doing my hands stop I, I've just got no rhythm I can't even dance so. I've no hope if I can play. If I can't dance, neither I can't do play. I, neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good listener. Yeah. No, I can. I can. I can draw and paint. I. I draw. I drove already some. I run already some. Some. Uh, run already some. Uh, dr uh, drawing and painting. Painting workshops. Yeah. Uh, these last few years, because uh, my my universitary studies are in economics. Right. And uh, my my business studies, I have I have a post degree in marketing and a master in marketing after that. 
Right. So I, I'm much, much focused on professionally. I'm much focused on, on solving problems uh, for big companies. Uh, of course, I can manage a small company, but very, very badly. I'm much more expert in organizing big companies and, and, and solving their problems. But anyway, uh, before going into economics and into management, I, I went into, I went into a fine art school here in Lisbon. Yeah. That's why, because I, I love, I always love to, to, to draw and to paint. So I went into fine art, fine art school. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's why I can I can draw and I can paint also. And so I saw I remember seeing a couple of years ago you had an exhibition, didn't you, with with all your work? Have you have you done many of those? Yes, uh, in Canary Islands. Yes, I've I've done a few. Uh, and now I expect that with my age, I will probably for sure I will dive much less. Unfortunately, but yeah. that's life. Yeah, <laughs> and I will paint much more. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, so it's, I will it's, a, it's a balance, isn't it? You know, if you're happy doing both, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I, I mean, you know, for we have uh, our brain is divided in, in uh, left side, right side, uh, cortical, limbic areas, different areas, and uh, in for for fine arts, I use uh, I. I use the the right side and for diving i use the left side <laughs> i believe i believe it is like that more or less so, Brilliant. because because diving is is quite technical as you know mm -hmm. and when you are an instructor you like you said before you you are not diving you are looking for the others you are paying attention to your students yeah. I run a few a few uh, shark diving courses with diving instructors included and so on. But I, when I was in the water, uh, with a theoretical part and a, a practical part, more or less the same like we have done in, in, in Fuerteventura uh, yeah. two years ago. Uh, but every time I, I'm going into the water with the, uh, students and sharks, I'm always looking at the, the students. I, I I don't care. I almost don't care about sharks, depending on the species. But I, yeah. I'm not looking at the sharks. I'm looking at the students. I'm mm. caring about the students. So if you are a diving instructor or a shark diver or a, any specialist diving instruct, instructor, you, you pay attention to your students, as you know. Yes, mate. I totally agree. So I see you've got a love for motorbikes. You've already mentioned it early on. Yeah. Have, you been, have you been riding bikes all your life? Uh, no, not all my life. More or less, uh, a little bit the same like with the, the, the sea. When I, when I was very, very young, I had a, a scooter yeah. until I had a, an accident. I had a scooter for about two years. I had an accident, not, not a very big accident, but it mm. was a little bit scary for me. So I left scooters, yeah. and uh, only after my professional life, I returned to bikes, not to the scooters, but to bigger bikes, and now I have a very, very nice, uh, a very nice bike, but uh, 1,200. 12, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I would love a motorbike, but I do believe within 30 minutes, I'd be dead. <laughs> so yeah, I know... But, I know my strengths and weaknesses are to stay away from bikes. <laughs> Andy, you have to wait maybe a, a couple of years more, but uh, when you you pick up a bike and you start riding a bike, you are, yeah. you are going to, to learn to pay a different attention to the traffic. Right. Because you, you are going to be, uh, to, to anticipate much more any kind of possible event right. than, than when you are in a car. When you are in a car, you have the doors, you are protected. It's a yeah. case, okay? In the bike, you don't have that case. So it's your arms, your legs, your head. It's terrible. <laughs> the, they are the roll cage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are, your brain will work much, much faster and you will always think in the worst case in the worst situation okay what can i do if this guy comes right yeah right directly to me or something mm. like that you, okay and there's another difference when you ride alone there's one thing you you take a lot of risks 
if you ride with uh, your wife on Billy. the back, for example, or with a friend, yeah. anybody on the back, oh, that that's the safest ride because you are uh, always thinking on the the passenger yeah. behind you. It's incredible, really. Mm. Uh, my my very best friend who came out to Fort Ventura and we met as well. He he's yeah. got a motorbike, but he just he just uses it on tracks now. So he, he'll go out to different areas of, of Europe, you know, for a, a long okay. weekend with his yeah. friends, and he just has it, his bike shipped out, blast uh -huh. around a track. But he came off last year. He was pretty lucky, to be fair. Did you get any serious injuries when you came off? No, 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 no. Fortunately, not. Until now, I hope it stays like that. Yeah, touch wood, <laughs> mate. Touch wood. <laughs> no injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, with your diving and obviously your love of sharks, I guess you've got you're quite into photography as well, then. A little bit, but not. I'm not a very, very big photographer underwater. No. Photography. I use photography outside of the water. I. I Sometimes when when it happens, I try to make some modeling, some portrait, but it's it's out of the water because I always loved photography by my my from my period on on the fine art schools. Yeah. photography was one of the disciplines in the yeah. in the study, in my study career. Right, that's why I use photography as a a tool for fine arts. So would you would you perhaps take a let's say a landscape portrait or a landscape picture and then you would bring that home, develop it and draw from that. And people, I prefer to to I prefer to photograph people. Right. Portrait or or uh, modeling I prefer. Yeah. Landscape I, I that they don't attract me attract me so much. No. When I go underwater, I use a, a small GoPro. Yeah. And for me, that's enough. Uh, uh, 4K photographies and videos, that's great already. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm not a very big big uh, specialist on, on underwater photography. And uh, by the way, it's super super expensive. Yeah, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know very well. And the water filmmakers, they are great. I, I love their work. I, I have a lot of friends uh, and the water filmmakers. Yeah. Because I, 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 I organize, in the Canary Islands, I, I organized a uh, couple of uh, underwater film festivals also. Right. And uh, I met a lot of people who, who dedicate their, their hobbies and their lives to underwater filming. Yeah. And video and, uh, well... They have a lot of footage, footage underwater with a, a, amazing images, but they 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 carry very heavy equipments, the lights, all yeah. the flash. It's terrible. It's not easy at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Filming is even even heavier. It's yeah. Cool. yeah. Well, I spoke to our mutual friend Teresa a couple of weeks ago because yeah. she's from Lagomir, isn't she? But she works yeah 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 in Fort yeah. Ventura now. Exactly. We would love to move out there and purely for the opportunities of the outdoor lifestyle. Yes. You know, being near the coast, being on a volcanic island, you know, it's just, it's magical, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. I, yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I was in, in, in uh, Canaries for, I was living there for seven years. It's, yeah. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Yeah. But I've I've had a similar conversation with someone else who I've interviewed on here, Nick, and they moved out to the Caribbean. Um, Nick mm -hmm. had a really bad accident at work; he damaged his vertebrae in his neck, and he made the the oh. the, um, the decision to sell everything in the UK, and they moved out to Saint Eustatius, I think it was called, one of the islands oh. in the Caribbean, and they did two years there. But they had a pension; he'd been in the RAF, so he had quite, you know, the Royal Air Force, so he had quite a lot of money coming in to support that lifestyle, whereas. If me and Ali, my wife, packed in everything we have at home, I think we yeah. would really struggle to make, just to make ends meet, you know, enough to live if we moved out there. So I don't, I don't see it happening for a good few years. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, if you only did it seven years ago, I could do it in 10 years, couldn't I? So why not aim for that? Mm -hmm. And yeah. enjoy, enjoy that period of my life. You have you have to save a lot of money to do that. I think mm. that's that's the that's the thing. Now I I, I I still have some hopes of traveling a lot and and uh, now I have uh, 
a personal ambition, which is uh, traveling to the French Polynesia in the middle South Pacific yeah. and staying there for uh, half a year or one year. I hope Amazing. I, I hope I can do it. But yeah. uh, I, I have also to, to get back to work, to save <laughs> some money to do that. Because yeah. it's expensive. Have you got a, a sort of timeline for that? Have you got a, a, an idea of when you want to do that? Or is it just a dream for now? Uh, it, for now, it's just a dream, but I, I can't wait too much, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'll be 62, so before the 70s, of course. Yeah. Uh, in, in five years, let's see if I'm yeah. lucky. If I'm lucky. You'll do it. You've just, you've just got to have that dream and that ambition and drive, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Just yeah. do it, make it happen. I just came here for a, a kind of a safety stop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and now with the pandemic, it was really a surprise for everybody, for me yeah. also, of course. So uh, everything is post-dated, but uh, the plan's still here. In, in in five years, I hope I can be yeah. anywhere else, but not here, in, not in Portugal, I know already. So how long have you been out of the water now? What's your surface interval? Oh, <laughs> since I think since since December, really? yes, November, December already. Yeah, yeah. I'm we, looking for to get back to the water. Mm. So, have you got somewhere local that you can dive? Are you quite on the coast yeah, there? A lot. Uh huh. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful places here, and you know, I miss quite a lot diving in Portugal because it's more than uh, eight years, seven, eight years now. Yeah. That I don't have in Portugal, so I I have a lot of friends here, of course, because I I, I used to 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 dive here. I dove a lot here with all of them, yeah. and uh, I'm I'm hoping that after this uh, lockdown we can go go back into the water and dive in normal circumstances. Yeah. How, without how a mask. Are, without. <laughs> <laughs> how are you coping with the lockdown? Are you are you have you are you getting frustrated now? Are you allowed out to do anything? No, we are allowed to go out. We are already uh, the confinement in a deconfinement phase, in the, the second deconfinement phase. That means that you can already go to, to the water to, to practice yeah. some sports in certain conditions. I have a few friends here. They start already diving. Yeah. But people are afraid. People are still afraid. Mm. And last, last weekend, I went to the beach. I spend all the Saturday uh, on on the on the beach. I swim a little bit in the sea. It was very very nice. So we are allowed to do these kind of things. Yeah. But with distance, uh, if you go shopping, you have to wear a mask. If you take a bus or a train, you have to wear a mask. Right. Okay. We can we can move. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than having to stay in the house, isn't it? All day, yeah, every course. day. We, we had we had to stay in house for. Uh, almost two months. Yeah, it was, it was terrible. Of mm. course, we we could go out to to make some sport or to to walk a dog or to go to the supermarket. <laughs> yeah, or to the pharmacy. That that was all. Mm. Uh, we were the, okay. we were the same. I, I think we've only been out two weeks now, properly, or we have personally, and we're yeah. we're allowed to dive, but only from the coast. So you know, like a, a beach entry. We can't okay, take any yeah, boats yeah. out. There's no inland diving at all. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I do agree, the freedom now is, is better than no freedom, even if it's a restricted exactly. freedom. So yeah. it's it's getting better. That work for me has picked getting up better. a little bit. Slowly, slowly, but it's getting mm-hmm. better. Let's let's hope that this keeps going on, mm-hmm. like in this, in this direction, because uh, there are some... As, as there's no science, the scientists they, they don't know what going, what are going, with what may happen. So let's hope everything mm. goes in the good direction. Absolutely. But really, we are not safe until we don't have uh, uh, confirmed treatment or uh, vaccine or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, let's get it back onto the topic then that we brought you on to talk about sharks. Everybody's favorite, who's a diver. And honestly, I've dived with a few different sharks now, clearly not as much as you have, but mm. I agree exactly with what you said, is every time I've been in the water with them, I've been taught properly how to behave around them. They don't seem very interested in me at all. They're quite happy for me to just be there 
and they'll mind yeah. their own business and get on with what they're doing as long as I don't interfere with them. And they're magical, aren't they? They're massive, great big beasts that could destroy me like that if they wanted. Second. But, but they just get on with it and they're majestic and they're beautiful. Yeah. And it is such a shame the numbers we are killing in comparison to how many of us they kill when we are invading, if you want to use that way, we're in their world, aren't we? Yeah. But, you know, there's only half a dozen people that they actually attack. And that's probably because of our ignorance. You know, we're doing something wrong, perhaps, there. But if if you were to, you know, in one of your, you know, where you're going to talk to kids about it and you, you're talking about shark, shark conservation, what would be your sort of top, I don't know, three or four tips of what you would tell people, how we can best serve sharks? You know, what can we do that's better that will help that environment? Yeah, okay. Uh, let me, yeah, let's let's start by, by the numbers. Uh, by the information that we have, uh, last year, I think it was less than uh, half a dozen. I think it was... We had three or max four uh, human deaths by shark uh, fatalities by shark bites. You know, yeah. During during last year, uh, 2019, I'm not sure about the number, but I, I I'm sure it was very very low number concerning mm -hmm. the, the average. But you are right. The average is about six people uh, die because of a shark bite every year. Yeah. No more than six people. Uh, on the opposite, uh, and and uh, because of fishing or uh, accidents or overfishing or uh, bycatch, anyway, uh, we kill about we human species. We kill about between uh, six, 60 million until we are not sure between sixty million and two thousand seventy million sharks a year. It's it's terrible, and wow. we are. We, are, we we drove we human species we drove many sharks to the to the border of extinction there are about as as i said there are more than 500 sharks different species and yeah. uh, about one third are uh, in danger or critically in danger of extinction it, that's terrible and that it, it, this is published in the International Union for uh, Conservation of the Nature uh, Red List. Yeah. So, not a lie. The numbers, why Why are so different? Because Why don't we know? Because most of uh, shark fishing are illegal. And, of course, they are not, these numbers are not published officially. Mm -hmm. The illegal fishermen, they don't announce officially the numbers of their catch. That's why we don't know, but we calculate through the information that we get from FAO, food yeah. and uh, organization, the food organization from the United Nations, the FAO. Uh, we can estimate these numbers comparing with the, the amount of uh, shark fins that arrive to the principal hubs, mar market hubs in the world. Yeah. Which are usually are, uh, are between Singapore and uh, Hong Kong, mostly Hong Kong, of course, in the south of uh, Asia and south of China. Yeah. Well, uh, what can we do? Of course, we can. Uh, everyone to 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 support shark conservation. First of all, why supporting shark conservation? Because we cannot live without a, 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 an healthy ocean. We we need. A healthy ocean to keep on balance all the the biodiversity on the planet, inclusively inclusively our own survival. So we need the ocean, uh, a healthy ocean, and to keep an healthy ocean, as far as we know, we need the the, the top the top predators alive. Yeah. If we kill all the top predators, and sharks are top pred predators in each uh, habitat. Usually they are. They only have the biggest, the big sharks. They only have one predator, or beside the humans, I, yeah. I, I, I think so. And uh, uh, of course, the human species is the most dangerous predator of any any shark species. Yeah. But but okay. 
I was saying, if if we kill the sharks, we are not saving any uh, trophic uh, habitat. We are killing all the levels behind the shark, you know? Right. Because the second level, without a predator that regulates them, the second level usually increase a, a lot. When the second level increases, the second level predates all the third level. The third level disappears and the second level disappears because after that they don't have any, any more food. Then the fourth level increases a lot and devastates the fifth level and yeah. so on and so on. And we, we risk of losing the, bas the, the basic producers of life. And when we talk about basic producer of life, we talk about uh, uh, micro algae that produce more than half of the oxygen, according with some, some theories, some scientists. Yeah. Micro algae produce about 80% of the oxygen of the planet. Yeah. We live now because of the oxygen produced in, by, by micro, uh, micro algae. I, uh, I only learned that a couple of weeks ago, you know, that, that a lot of this stuff that comes out of the ocean. Yeah, far outweighs what comes out of the rainforest. I didn't know. I, I really didn't know that until about two or three weeks ago. Well, w w that's true. Nobody usually nobody knows that. Everybody thinks, oh, uh, the importance of the forests, the importance of Amazonia, the importance of the rainforest in Australia. Okay, they are very important, of course, but we don't exist without micro algae, mm -hmm. <laughs> without the phytoplankton. And yeah. of course, without the zooplankton, that's why the biologists, they call them uh, basic producers. They are the basic producers of life on our planet. And we cannot live without them. Killing the top predators of each trophic habitat, of each trophic net, we risk of changing all the marine balance. We don't know about the, nothing about the future, mm. but when we play too much with the nature, we risk to look at now we have well, we have a pandemic because yeah. of uh, we suppose because of the animals uh, killing animals is very complicated yeah we, we shouldn't what can we do right we can support uh, educational and conservational uh, movements like for example right now i'm 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 a member of uh, a, a, a citizens group a european union citizens group initiative to stop the shark finning, to legally increment uh, uh, regulation in the European Union to stop the shark fin trade, importations, trade inside the Union and exportations. Yeah. That's what we, we need. And we need the support of everybody around, not only in the European Union, but also in the UK, outside, in the Americas and so on, to at least to spread, to make a lot of noise, to make a lot of pressure in the legislators all around the world, if we get the, 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 to for, to, to the prohibition, the forbidden of shark fin trade all around the world, we, we will live in a much, much safer world with sharks. Some, some people say, oh, uh, I'm afraid of sharks in the water. Well, I'm much more afraid of sh water without sharks. Yeah. Can I ask you a question on shark finning? Please. To, uh, sorry to interrupt what you were telling me, and hopefully we'll go back no, to that. Please, please. But I, my question is, why do we need to legislate against it that, that our governments, you know, it's it's very widely broadcast on on all sort of medias now, how detrimental, what you know, what you just spoke about is. Yeah. So you'd think that everybody's governments now, all the governments around the world would be behind this cause. So why do we need to petition them to legislate against it. Why aren't they just legislating against it? Or is there any money in it for the governments? You know what? What we're we missing is there. Is there money? You know the, why? Why is the government not legislating against it anyway? You know why do we need uh, to get them to do it? Andy, it, 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 there are a lot of uh, economic interests. Uh, from di different parties, from fishermen, from uh, shark fin traders, uh, about I I heard this. Uh, uh, we don't have numbers, of course, because a part of uh, shark finning uh, business is illegal, so it's not con contabilized. It's not uh, written yeah. on the paper. 
we don't have the numbers, the precise numbers, but uh, I heard this a uh, few years ago that uh, the shark fin, the international, the global shark fin trade was uh, the second most uh, profitable activity yeah. in the world. The first activity was the cocaine uh, traffic. Wow. And the second, the shark fin trade. Just imagine yeah. before before uh, gans uh, or uh, human organs or whatever unfortunately these are all criminal things of yeah. course but uh, governments can um, support sometimes they support a lot of uh, uh, governments uh, clarified studying supporting based on science they support the shark finning in tradition they support legislation to, to finish with the finning, but yeah. uh, there are a lot of private interests. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. unfortunately, there are a lot of activities, very lucrative activities. The most lucrative activities are illegal. Yeah, usually like that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, so there's the Euro there's the European petition. Obviously, the one we've just spoke about, the one in the yeah. UK that I just signed up to. Um, so, what else do you think? would be a good idea if someone wanted to get behind the cause what else could we do we had we we have present this this uh, initiative in the european union together with our uh, colleagues at that time from from uk we had presented last year in in uh, november i think we present the initiative to the uh, european commission and in december the european commission approved our initiative, and after that, the the the, the follower the, the following step was, and it is to have we 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 have one year, twelve months to collect one million votes, and they approved our initiative uh, at the the last day of December, and they give us the the the, the page or oh, it's an official page of the European Commission. They give us the page open to vote the first of February. Right. As you know, a month later the world stopped. So yeah. all all the planning things that the, all the events that we had before, we had to, to rethink. We have to change them and. Uh, uh, there's a, there's a, a small just think about this. Uh, if we we want to send a press release or a video about shark finning or a press release about our initiative to the media right now and uh, one or two months before, do you think as a periodist that you will publish anything about sharks? No, not at all. People people were and still. They, the people still very worried with their uh, own uh, health, yeah. with public health. Sharks come later. Remember, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let me give you an example, and this can be useful for everyone. Uh, listen to your uh, podcast videos and so on. Uh, maybe one year ago, all over the world, the most advanced governments were implementing measures to replace plastic. Single-use plastic. Yeah. It was we were close to to forbid to 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 forbidden the the, the single-use plastic in Europe, in UK, all over the world. I suppose in the most development countries yeah. for sure. Right now, we see in the in the street, we see the people using uh, <laughs> gloves, masks all yeah. over. It's terrible. Mm. There, there's uh, nobody cares no more right now. In the last few months, nobody cares about plastic tools. First of all, it's it's the, the public health and the personal health. I can understand that, but uh, we have to think in the on, on we we have to care about the planet mm. with pandemic or without pandemic. We yeah. are living a pandemic because we didn't care enough about the planet. I believe so. Uh, I couldn't agree asking, more. Uh, asking to the people right now to please uh, give us your vote, support shark conservation, support shark education. People uh, look at us like 
from coming from another uh, capsule, from com coming from another planet. So I think <laughs> parts. Why are those guys talking about parts? Yeah. This is a pandemic, mm -hmm. <laughs> pandemic time all over the world, and these guys are worried about sharks. Yes, we are. We are very worried about sharks. I think. But I think the pandemic and the lockdown period has been a, a good period for a lot of people to reflect and perhaps look at outside the bubble slightly. Certainly from people I've spoken to, you know, how they've perhaps changed the way they communicate with people yeah. and how they sure. interact. So whilst I totally agree, you know, with what everything you've just said, the, you know, people sort of see self first and think yes. about outside that bubble second, a lot yeah. of people have slowed their life, the pace of life slowed down and given them that time okay. to perhaps mm -hmm. look outside and see what else is going on and how they can do things differently. So I, it's my hope with podcasts, uh, th these kind of podcasts, I'll highlight a few issues. You are, you are doing a great job, Andy. You Thank are you. doing a great job. Yes, yes, because it's the opportunity also. As you said, it's the opportunity. You, we are more uh, protected we are in our homes we we talk by the internet in a certain way this this pandemic crisis has also opened the world i i, I don't think last year december with the same technology i i, I never thought to talk with you an no. hour on on on, on internet Never. <laughs> you know what? You and know what? We can, we can do it, and yeah. we can repeat that, and uh, in one year or in six months, whenever mm. we want, whenever we need. I can speak with my friends in South Africa. It's much easier after the pandemic than before. The technology is the same, but now it's easier. Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. I hated it I, four years ago when I met Steve before, yeah. around the same yeah. time as yeah. I met you. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. he used to do this all the time. He wouldn't ring up on the telephone. He'd just do uh -huh. Skype because he wanted to make sure that I was looking right in his eyes and having yes. a conversation. <laughs> but, but I've done so many of them now. It's almost it's it's brilliant because yes, you can you establish a different rapport, don't you? And it's it is, yes, it's easier yeah. and it's I've not once I looked totally at my picture. Yeah, I hate my picture, but I'm not looking at it. I'm looking at you. Yeah, See, and, and me, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't look too loud. But it's just like no, we're sat no, in no. my garden, really. So it's nice. I, I, I quite enjoy it now, and I think I'll do more of it. That's great. That's great. Oh, I feel the same, exactly the same. It's incredible. It's mm -hmm. amazing. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's much better. Mm. So if you, if you could look back over your time as a diver and a conservationist and, a sh you know, with your interests in sharks, is there anything you would have done differently, perhaps? Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing for sure, I will. I, I would have started much much earlier. <laughs> That's for sure. I, yeah. I I I start with shark diving education and so on. Only after I went to South Africa, and uh, I went to South Africa in two thousand and six. Right. The first time, and I I went there for study uh, white sharks, and uh, after after this this course, I I've run I've done there. I learned a lot uh, a lot with uh, Michael Redson in Guns Bay. It's a, a very very small village, uh, about 160 kilometers to the east from from uh, Cape Town. Okay, uh, but. He, he still there. There's a lot of other uh, shark diving instructors there, and they can teach a lot. Uh, but not only there. There's all, there are also a lot of uh, good people diving and teaching to dive with sharks in Bahamas, in in uh, Mexico, in yeah. in, uh, in Australia, all around the world. Just find if you are interested in sharks or anyone that can uh, be uh, listen to us. If anyone is interested for about sharks, my first advice is uh, please follow a shark diving course and maybe it can change your life. It did to me in 2006. Yeah. My first regret, my only regret, my 
immediate regret is that I went too late to South Africa. I yeah. would have done that uh, 10, 20 years before. But, well, it's life. I, I couldn't. I was working. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is, there, is there anything else you'd like to mention that I perhaps may not have asked you about? Is anyone, you know, sort of... I, I I thank you very much for you for this interview and uh, I I just uh, thank you the opportunity of, of uh, sharing this this uh, importance of sharks on our uh, I I would say, I was saying marine balance but I I I may say the planet the balance of the planet yeah. of course as as, as I have studied sharks very deeply already I, I'm not a marine biologist and in in the beginning I thought oh what a pity I I didn't study biology I should have done it yeah. now I I think completely the opposite. Fortunately, I'm not a marine biologist. I have a very, very good friends, marine biologists, but, but they are so technical, so, so deeply involved in a small detail that they, they don't have this, this view as a shark diver. Right. They rarely, rarely uh, dove with sharks. Yeah. Some of them never, and right. they are very big experts in sharks. But uh, if you are a shark diver, you think differently. And... Uh, Coming from a different area like yours or like mine, yeah. uh, bring us bring us the opportunity of, of learning uh, different things from from the science. Mm. I I'm now writing a few articles for uh, two different magazines, one in Ar Ar Argentina and another one in Dubai. Right. And uh, I'm I'm writing in Spanish and I'm writing in English with a uh, little help from from my friends editors of course yeah. because I'm not native Spanish or neither <laughs> English of course but uh, with the with the, the little uh, the little help that I get from them uh, I'm writing some articles of course based on science but from a point of view of a shark diver so uh, it it's a new way of writing about sharks and sharing about sharks. Mm. Uh, maybe I, I can share some some articles also with you. Absolutely, please do. Yeah, in a near, in a near future. But well, to finish uh, to finish this, uh, I just want to thank you and to thank everybody for uh, for for their in interest about sharks. Mm. If you are a diver, please uh, take a look. Pay attention to 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 the shark importance, and uh, you if you want to know more about sharks, you will learn a lot of good things about sharks. Well, I, I've, I've got to say thanks for coming on. Um, just one last Thank question, you. if you if I can. Please do. If I was to do a shark course now, like what you talked about, yeah. were were in the world, if there was anywhere in the world and money was no option. Where would you go to do that shark course? Would you go back to South Africa or is there somewhere else? It's a difficult question. If I say South Africa, I'm excluding all the other friends that I have in Australia <laughs> or in Bahamas. You know? yeah. But maybe between these three areas. Mm. Uh, when I, I'm now preparing some, some, some uh, shark diving courses uh, oriented to uh, diving instructors. Yeah, I don't train students, uh, open waters or advanced divers uh, yeah. directly. I, I'm focused on training shark. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm I'm focused now on training uh, diving instructors directly in a way that they can after that they can pass the message to their students. That's that's what I think, and uh, I'm now preparing something in Maldives. So. As far as I know, you have these three areas: uh, Australia and uh, South Africa and Bahamas. Right. One of one of those three areas are are okay. Oh, and Baja uh, Baja California in Mexico. Yeah. yeah. yeah there are a, a, a lot of good people there. Oh, I was forgot. <laughs> I, was, I, I forget that. No, I have a very good friends there uh, from different companies in Baja California in Mexico. Right. Yeah, I know of that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there. There are two Spanish uh, shark diver girls. They are very good, Gador and Reggie. And yeah. there are there's also uh, I have also their uh, shark diver instructor 
which cooperates with me in the Sharks Educational Institute, which is uh, his, his his name is Pascal Godos, uh, Godospovic. He's from uh, Germany, and uh, well, Michael Watson, of course, in South Africa. But there are a lot. There are uh, Alessandro de Madalena, biologist, uh, a professor, also in South Africa, very very close uh, to Cape Town, e even easier, closer than Gunsby. Right. A lot of people. No. Mm. Very, well, very, Steve it, Fox in, in in Steve Fox in Australia. Not well, yeah. th there's a plenty to choose from, isn't there? But I, I'll tell you what, it'd be nice if we, if we could ever meet up again. Obviously, that's why I've, I've kept I in touch with so, you. Yeah, yeah. But if you are Let's ever running, if you are ever running that course, I'd be extremely interested to um, to cool. maybe jump on it. Um, yeah. So is short of obviously you've said your thank yous and whatnot. Is there anyone you want to say hello to? The, the, the most important thing to promote right now for me is this uh, European Union uh, Citizens Initiative, you know, yeah. and, and I want to thank you to, uh, to the leader of the initiative uh, and to some good friends behind the initiative. Yeah. Uh, for example, my good friend Iris, I would like to thank her, and uh, my good friend Alex, and uh, of course, my good friend Niels, leading the European Citizens Initiatives, and all the team behind my Portuguese team here, yeah. uh, Patricia. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people uh, that I want to thank, but uh, <laughs> they're still on the fight, and uh, me too, so... <laughs> I hope I hope we can share our uh, news with you. I will do it with you, and and uh, I would love to meet you, for example, in Maldives <laughs> next year. <laughs> Mate, I'd meet you anywhere, but Maldives would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for a shark diving course. I yeah, mean. that'd be brilliant. Yeah, well, we yeah. booked to go to Mexico in December. Unfortunately, it's the Atlantic side. So, we're, well, okay. in, in the actual. Um, Oh, what do you call it now? In the Caribbean, so we're we're, we're going doing like a cavern course, and we're, we'll be ah, okay, okay. slightly. I, that's not so far from Playa del Carmen. Playa that's del it, yeah. Carmen. Yeah, I have I have some good friends there. Uh, maybe uh, I can put you in contact because the, you have a, a, an, an extraordinary experience to 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 run uh, to to follow there, okay. which is diving with bull sharks. Yeah, well, if we're nearer the time, I'll get in touch with you, and we'll 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 sort that link out between the two. So that that okay. would be that would be great. Yeah, um, I don't know the, the I I there's it's it's also a, a, a trip that I want to 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 do. I I I never went to Playa del Carmen, but there's a, a season in the year. I'm not sure which time if it's summer or winter. But there's a small season in here where uh, bull shark females, the big bull shark females, come almost to the shore to give birth to their puppies. So yeah. it's beautiful. They are completely uh, slowly swimming there because they are waiting to give birth fantastic. to their puppies. It's fantastic. Well, fingers crossed that it's December yeah. <laughs> and that we can still go. <laughs> That'll be good. All right, mate. Well, thank you very much for your time. Okay, thanks a lot. Take it easy. Stay safe, mate. Nice one. Sure. So that brings us to the end of episode eight with my friend, Fernando Chris. Links to all the things we discussed are in the podcast notes. My guest on episode nine is a guy called Stu Lawson. He suffered life-changing injuries whilst on operations overseas with the military and he tells of how he bounced back to find a new lease of life through scuba diving. You've been listening to Are You A Scuba Diver Fancy A Brew with me, Andy the Northern Diver. You can find more scuba-related content on my YouTube channel and the link is in the podcast notes. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing and leaving us a five-star review. If there's someone or something you'd like us to discuss, then let us know via our Facebook page. Thanks for listening. See you on the next one.